We are about to power rank all the teams in the AFC South. Who is going to win the division this year? You're going to have to find out on today's edition of the Dom Mafia Report. Yo, ho, ho, Dom Mafia. Welcome to yet another edition of the Dom Mafia Report. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. What I'm doing is I'm starting a trend on this channel, okay? About a couple of weeks ago, I ended up power ranking the AFC East. And then I said, you know what? Let's power rank each and every single division. Why the f not? So I figured the AFC South would be interesting because obviously people watching this channel know that I'm a diehard Buffalo Bills fan. And I picked the AFC South just because we just so happen to be going up against that division this year. So might as well start off with those fools. Before I get into it, I do want to give a couple of announcements. Number one, I'm giving away either a PS5 or an Xbox Series X, announcing the winner on July 2nd. All you need to do is be a subscriber to this YouTube channel, screenshot proof of that, and DM it to me at RealDanMitchell on Instagram, and follow me there because that's where I will be announcing the winner. As soon as you do that, you now have an opportunity of bringing home a next gen console. So pause this video and take care of that. Second announcement. Come here. Come here. Smash the f out of that like button. And that's going to do it for the announcements today. Guys, without further ado, let's start power ranking the AFC South. First on the list, Da Mafia is going to be none other than the Houston Texans. Now, let me preface this by saying that perhaps I still am a bit spiteful of that playoff game that occurred in 2019 where the Texans ended up beating the Buffalo Bills and then proceeding to getting slaughtered by the Kansas City Chiefs that one year. Well, it does seem to be that karma has struck this team because frankly, I think that this is not only the worst team in the AFC South, this is perhaps going to be the worst team in the NFL in 2021. As Brandon Perna says, it is absolutely no way that this team will not be the number one overall pick during next year's draft. Now, it was definitely clear because they ended up losing a lot of personnel, such as J.J. Watt. The man went off to Arizona. And Deshaun Watson, no one knows what the hell is going on there. He's made it clear that he doesn't want to be with the organization. And frankly, we don't know where he's going to be. The Texans, maybe another team, jail. And then it came down to Will Fuller, who ended up taking his HGH-induced talents down to South Beach. It seems like that this team is really a skeleton of what it was at this point. They're clearly in a rebuild. When it ended up coming to the draft, at the end of the day, Bill O'Brien just them until the end because they only had five draft picks and none of them were really wow we're going to be day one contributors going into the 2021 season now they did end up picking up a couple of interesting free agents slash making trades for one they got Shaq Lawson from the Miami Dolphins they ended up picking up Terod Taylor as well former quarterback of the Buffalo Bills which was clearly an insurance move if Deshaun Watson or when Deshaun Watson inevitably leaves Houston at the end of the day um, it's, it was tough, it was tough. This team is clearly in a rebuild. They're getting a new coaching staff for the most part. It is just going to be from the ground up. I'm really interested to see what this team can do in future years. Uh, but in all honesty, there is no way in hell that the Houston Texans are not going to be finishing dead last in the AFC South. I have them sitting at number four. Number three is going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars. For the longest time, I pronounced it as Jaguars, and then a lot of you Jags fan completely, completely incinerated me. This going into it, this is a very similar situation to Houston, but uh, Houston is just like 30 times more f***ed. The Jacksonville Jaguars seem to be at least putting the right pieces together where they can be a third place finishing team within a division. It seems like Urban Meyer, the second that he came in, he was, you know, really shaking things up. Of course, when it came down to the draft, right? Obviously, the number one overall pick, I think everybody and their mother knew that Trevor Lawrence was going to be a Jacksonville Jaguar. And the surprise pick was definitely Travis Etienne. I'm a little salty. I did want the Buffalo Bills to end up picking him up. But I think with the continuity of those two that played alongside each other over at Clemson University is going to be a pretty interesting sort of combination. Then once you also account for the fact that they are bringing back a very talented and young wide receiver core, it's clear that Urban Meyer came in here with the attention that we are starting this rebuild right damn now. 
Big surprise to me was the fact that they really weren't big spenders in free agency. I'm pretty sure that they were sitting at about the third highest in cap room before March 16th occurred, or March 17th, excuse me. And they really didn't make any huge moves. I would say the largest move that they made was bringing back Virgin Boy himself, Tim Tebow. And who even knows if he's going to make the team. The Jaguars, I think, are going to have a significant improvement of a season in 2021. I see them winning about four to five games going into it. Uh, but I really like what Urban Meyer has been doing thus far. So hence, I'm sitting you guys at number three. Number two, the Tennessee Titans. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I do foresee this team being a wild card team in the playoffs in 2021. But there are a lot of questions. Obviously, the offensive coordinator, Arthur Smith, ended up taking the head coaching job for Atlanta. The new offensive coordinator has some pretty big shoes to fill. But in my opinion, as long as he's familiar with the phrase, just give the damn ball to Derrick Henry, then I think all is going to be well with this team. But in all honesty, I really wanna see how Ryan Tannehill will be able to adjust to a new form of play calling via this new offensive coordinator moving into it. They did end up losing Corey Davis, which was a huge blow over to the New York Jets. Why Davis went to the Jets, I have no idea. And not to mention that they weren't able to bring back Johnny Smith. But right off of the bat, they lost some pretty, pretty powerful weapons. Of course, they ended up replacing Davis with Reynolds out of LA. A pretty good receiver, definitely not a Cordy Davis style receiver, but it may just do the job and he might be a sleeper pick for some fantasy leagues or something like that. Who knows? And on top of that, they ended up losing a lot of their secondary, but they did end up making some upgrades there where I could foresee them actually improving in the struggles that they experienced via their secondary last year in 2020. And of course, as of now, where the headlines are standing, they are the front runner to acquire Julio Jones. Say for example, that Julio Jones does go to this team, does go to the Tennessee Titans, then I would argue that this would be the best team in the AFC South. But as of now, they're sitting at number two wildcard team, like I said, and we're moving on to number one. Number one is obviously the Indianapolis Colts. And like most off seasons for the Colts, very anticlimactic. But one thing I will say between drafting and between free agency in general, they really know how to get the best bang for their buck and really not making questionable decisions when it comes to acquiring free agents, making trades, or even the draft by itself. This is a very well put together team. Phillip Rivers retires and now they're bringing in Carson Wentz. And this is the biggest, biggest question right now. Can Carson Wentz return back to his form prior to the injury bug that he caught while being in Philly. Now, there's a couple of things to consider. He is going to be back with Frank Reich, and he absolutely thrived in that Philly offense when Frank was over there. And number two, the guy went from probably the most piss poor performance I've ever seen an offensive line demonstrate to the best offensive line in all of football. So at the end of the day, it's anybody's gamble if Carson Wentz is going to be able to put it together but with the run game that Indy has, the damn defense that Indy has, I still see them being a shoe in for the AFC South and winning the division. And Dom Off, you do me a favor, leave a comment. What do you think the power rankings are for the AFC South? Really wanna hear your thoughts on that. Thank you so much for tuning in to yet another edition of the Dom Off Report. I will see you tomorrow. And before I let you go, always remember, let's go Buffalo.